y'all what's up it's hannah and welcome back to my channel and hello if you are new here today's video i am super excited about i know i always say that but this video has been super requested and it's something that i absolutely love to talk about and that is breeding chickens and getting started with hatching and selling your own chicks i have written down a couple notes so i don't forget anything. I'm not going to be going into detail about absolutely every little thing because there's a lot that goes into it. So this is just going to be like an overview of like some ideas of things you need to like think about when you're getting started. And I am going to be making like different videos about more detailed topics. I do have a health hatchlings series that this is going to be a part of that I will have linked in the description box for y'all. And this time of year is literally my busiest time of year, springtime and early summer. I am super busy with my hatchlings and my chickens with my eggs, all of that kind of stuff. And a popular question that I get is what I used my chickens for and like kind of what I do with my chickens. We have chickens for eggs, of course, and then I have different breeds that I breed and then hatch to sell the chicks or I'll sell like young pullets or cockles or whatever. And then I also sell fertile eggs whenever I am not collecting to hatch. So kind of in between of when I have chicks in the incubator, or like eggs in the incubator or whatever, and I'm not collecting eggs to set because it's too early, then I have like a week or two period of time since I don't have enough incubators right now that I can't set every single week. I normally set a couple times a month. During that period of time, I will collect eggs to sell for other people to hatch. So I also make money that way, and then I, of course, make money off of the babies and the chickens that I sell. And then the peak and ducks that I have, I also hatch those out and sell their eggs as well. So that's kind of how I make money off of the chickens, but even if I didn't make money off of them, I would still have them just because I love and enjoy it so much. And I've had so many young people message me telling me that I've inspired them to start incubating and hatching their own chickens and that literally makes my heart so happy. Like that makes me so excited. Hatching your own babies is literally so much fun, especially the first time you see your eggs start to pip. Like it's such a rewarding feeling and like handling them and seeing their heartbeat and everything like it that never gets old to me like it's always so exciting and I just love it so much and I've had several people message me that want to make money off of it and you can definitely make money off of it depending on how much you do how much you're like known for it and just all that kind of stuff but you're definitely not going to make money off of it like from the very beginning especially if you're starting from scratch because you know it takes like a lot to get started and your birds like have to mature and that takes you know a good year or so depending on the breed but it's not something you can just get and just make money off of like right away but it's definitely good side money like if you're known like really well around your town or if you're able to ship depending like if you're licensed or not and you can definitely do it full time like have your own little hatchery and everything it's just getting started and just like growing it and getting your name out there but it does take a little bit to get there you know and i would love to get licensed so i could at least even like ship eggs because i have some really rare birds so i think that'd be really cool but i'm just setting like little goals along the way and i'm just enjoying it because i love it i talked about this a little bit in my video of talking about breeding highland cattle and something that I always like to ask myself or ask somebody whenever they're wanting to get into something is, so I'm going to leave them alone, is if you would do it if you never got paid to do it, like, are you passionate about it to where if you didn't get paid to do it, would you still be interested in it and would you still want to do it? I'm like really big on like being fueled by passion like and not by money because I feel like if you're driven by money, you're not going to be like fulfilled by like what you're doing and you're not going to be like genuinely happy with it. To whereas if you're fueled and like driven by passion, I feel like you're going to be super fulfilled and happy with what you're doing and accomplishing because it does take a while to get established and it takes a while to get started and you have to put a lot of hard work and all that kind of stuff into it. I don't care what kind of business you're getting into. And that's something I always like to ask myself. Where's your toy? Let's find your toy. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about are breeds. Whenever you're first getting... <laughs> Maui, I'm trying to film. Whenever you're first getting started, that's normally like one of the first things you have to determine are the type of bird and then the breed that you are going to want to be breeding to hatch and everything. It's 
very noisy in here. <laughs> and I definitely would do breeds that you love, like some of your favorite breeds, because, because then you would just enjoy it like so much more instead of having breeds that you didn't really like. Hey, go find your toy and leave her alone. Whatever I did when I first started was I got breeds that I loved, but breeds that were also rare and hard to find around my town and just kind of hard to find in general. So I would definitely do breeds that you love, breeds that do good in your climate, and also breeds that are like in high demand. So like not necessarily only rare breeds, but even like breeds that lay a lot of eggs. And then the next thing I'm gonna talk about is space. So that's another thing you're gonna have to consider as far as what breed you're gonna be getting. So if you don't have a lot of money or a lot of room like to start out with, you could always start out with Bantams. And Bantams normally go broody also. They don't eat as much and they could be your incubators. And also, you don't want to start out with too many different breeds because you have to have a lot of space to do, you know, so many breeds. As you can see behind me, this is my Lavender Orpington Chicken Coop. And I also have some Easter Eggers in here because I, I crossbreed between the Lavender Orpingtons and Easter Eggers. And they are some of my favorite as far as crossbreeds go. As far as crossbreeds... <laughs> Why can I speak? As far as cross breeds go, um, I absolutely love that cross. And then in this chicken coop over here, I have some of my silkies. And that's something I get a lot of questions about. Each breed that I breed, and I have different chicken coops for them. That way they are purebred and I know what they are. Because if you have a big chicken coop or you just have them free ranging and all of your birds are together, you have different roosters, then you're not going to know exactly what breed they are since they're mixed with different things. That's what they call like barnyard mixes because you don't really exactly know what they are. And you can get a lot of great birds that way, but most of the time people want to buy purebred birds. So even if you don't have different chicken coops, you could still sell, you know, your barnyard mixes. But I personally just like to have different chicken coops. And normally when I free range my birds, I'll just let certain chicken coops out at a time or you know alternate days or whatever and what I did in my big chicken coop because in my big chicken coop I have different breeds because that's the you know chicken coop that we mostly use for our eggs even though I collect from all of them what I did in that chicken coop because I still wanted to have a breed in there that I could breed since you know it's a whole chicken coop you know I didn't want to like waste it as far as you know having it you know for separating purposes so I have my Morans in there and then I had a Moran rooster in there. And Moran eggs are a different color so I could tell them apart. And since he was the only rooster in there, that I knew all the Moran eggs were purebred Morans. So that is one way to do it. If you do have several different breeds of hens and you only have one chicken coop, you can get a breed that you can tell like their eggs apart and then only have that one rooster in there. So that is one way to get started if you only have one chicken coop and you already have like an existing flock but that's something that I still do because I don't want that chicken coop to go to waste as far as like having it for breeding and then I have another chicken coop for some cochins and I've also bred cochins with silkies and that was really neat because I had some frizzles in there so I had like sizzles which are fr fr <laughs> it's a tongue twister frizzles crosses silky those were interesting I'll put them up on the screen I think I'm probably gonna do that again I'm not really sure and I only have one breed of duck, so I know those are purebred. And then something else that I get asked a lot is about the eggs being fertile and do you have to have a rooster? And that's even a common question, even if you are not breeding. And your hens are gonna lay whether there is a rooster or not. But if you do not have a rooster, the eggs are not gonna be fertile. So you have to have a rooster to hatch your eggs or you could, you know, buy hatching eggs. Um, that's up to you, but I personally, like to have the parents and all that kind of stuff and then you have to figure out where you're gonna get your chicks from if you're gonna get full-grown chickens or how you want to go about that I personally like getting chicks because I like raising them up myself so that of course you know starting from scratch that will take longer because you have to wait until they are laying for a good bit before you can hatch their eggs but that's completely up to you if you want to go ahead and you know get babies or if you want to get you know full-grown chickens or ducks that are already laying but what you do need to keep in mind is whoever you're getting those chickens from, you are relying on them that they are purebred if that's what you're looking for. They don't have any health problems or, you know, diseases or anything like that because that's what you're going to be breeding and those are the babies that you're going to be selling. And even if they're certified, they could be getting birds from someone who is not certified and they could, you know, carry merics or, you know, you want to be really careful with who you get your birds from. And I recently, I, it was my last video, I did a video 
on me picking up my blue Americanas from the post office that we ordered from Meyer Hatchery and I would definitely recommend Meyers. I'll have them linked in the description box and if you don't want to order you could always research local breeders as well but if you are you know ordering you know a rare breed or whatever I would definitely recommend Meyer Hatchery and you do make more money off of grown chickens because you can sell them for more because most people want to get chickens that are already laying and especially people that are older or people that just don't have the time to care for you know babies and deal with cleaning up brooders and all that kind of stuff if you sell them as they're grown you'll have them for longer so you'll have to feed them you know while you have them and then you'll need more room and, and I do sell some grown chickens but I mostly sell the babies and all of my babies I sell straight run, which means I don't sex them. It's a very tedious process and it's very difficult. I have done ducks before and they were a day old whenever I did it and I did get it right that time. I personally just sell them all straight run so I can't get in trouble for not knowing what they were. I don't want to like be held reliable for it. So I let everybody know like they're straight run, you know, like I don't know what they are. I've already made a chick care guide so I'll have that linked in the description box in case y'all are new to having chicks and you want to know more about caring for them. But I will have more videos in this series like I said. Feel free to comment topics down below that you would like me to talk about. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can see more of the future videos that are going to be coming to the series. Southern is barking at the trash people. And if you would like to see behind the scenes and pictures and videos and everything like that of my babies, um, be sure to follow me on Instagram. It's always linked down in the description box. So yeah, I hope y'all found this video helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. And I will see y'all very soon with another video.